Hi, I'm Jason Sterling, and this is an RM Cascadian travel vlog. Today, my son and I have gone to Epcot at Disney World in Orlando. My son and I that morning set out for Epcot on the beautiful Skyliner. Just like we got to Disney Studios the day before. Epcot is my second favorite park at the Disney World Resort Complex. And just like my first favorite park at Disney Studios, Epcot suffers from a little bit of a crisis of theming. A crisis of cohesive purpose. Now, Disney Studios is definitely working on that and has made great strides over the last two decades. Uh, Epcot is just starting to make that process come about. <clears throat> and they're particularly starting in Future World, which for the last several years has been a massive construction mess. And I mean, it is a massive construction zone and the additions they have made have ranged from the really really good one of the best rides at disney world to the really really mediocre to a retail and eating complex that looks like a combination of a old navy at a dying shopping mall and as my son put it a mcdonald's and they're still not done they have quite a ways to go in fact judging by the amount of construction the last time i was there now world showcase still mostly holds on to its world's fair theming it still feels like a sort of large walkable interaction museum of countries and cultures however you can definitely see the entering wedge of various ips or intellectual properties pushing open the door and being shoehorned into places that they kind of fit kind of work but not really it's just more of an excuse to have them there is that good is that bad so far it hasn't been a huge impactful change unless you really like like a circle vision film <laughs> or or um you are really fond of maelstrom i was really fond of maelstrom I, I i i do miss that i thought that was a great story and a great ride that's not to say the frozen version is not a great story and a great ride because it is but saying you know kind of shoehorning it into norway is a little little sketchy at best right and the same thing with ratatouille's adventure um Placing it in France, yes, it does take place in France. It's still, you know, a cartoon about a mouse running a restaurant. It really doesn't have anything to do with France. I haven't seen the movie. Now, maybe, maybe it's just like a documentary of France. I really don't know, <laughs> but somehow I doubt it. And, you know, it did replace what was essentially a sort of travelogue and documentary of France. And then you have a few things that are a little less innocuous, right? You know, like Winnie the Pooh over in England. Okay, he kind of fits. It's not really a hundred acre wood. <laughs> it's not really out in the countryside of England, but we'll give it a pass, right? So there's a few things like that. But I do feel like the World Showcase basically is still the World Showcase. You know, you still have that feel of visiting an extremely clean and Americanized version of those different countries, but it's still a lot of fun to go there. And it's a lot of fun to go to Epcot, even the Future World, which you go to Future World, you're going to walk up. It looks the same as always because it has the giant spaceship Earth there waiting for you. They have made a really good change. They're adding little uh, LED lights all over the surface that create different sort of effects at night. That is a really great change. Kind of a small one, but still a really, really nice change. And the history of communications within Spaceship Earth is the same as it's been for a while. I mean, I think that's been updated over the years, of course, but it's the same story and the same passage of, you know, tracking the way we've communicated throughout history.
It's a very nice ride. I have I have a fondness for it because it was my son's favorite ride when he was like six. Go figure. I don't know why, but that was one of his favorite rides when he was six. He wanted to ride it like over and over again. So I do have a real fondness for it, and I really like it too. It is a really nice ride. Hi, and welcome to Future World. That's Future World there behind me. I'm always going to call it Future World. I know it has a different name now. I think it's like World blah blah something right like three different world zones but to me it'll always be future world this is the monorail track right behind me monorail comes sweeping through future world now over here to this other side is the old odyssey building uh it's actually being for food used for food right now because of the food and wine festival but also it has a place to fill up water bottles which you're gonna need to mark that on your map because in august it has been blistering hot um i saw a great time though at least you know it rains a little bit in the evenings cools things off and as long as you stay hydrated, I think you're going to be just fine. And definitely memorize where you can just refill your own water bottle. We spent more on, on drinks yesterday than we did on food. Uh, cause, and, that, and I actually brought a water bottle. It's just like when you're dying of thirst, though, and that refill station is all the way across the park, you're going to go ahead and just stop and get a bottle of water. Uh, we're going to head over there and grab some early rides. I think everything has like only five or ten minutes wait right now over there in Future World. And we're going to ride that monorail. Uh, we're going to hop on and just ride the monorail as a ride. It's one of my favorite rides at Disney World and it's free. It's just to hop on the monorail and go a big circuit out to Magic Kingdom and come back. So that's where we're headed next to the monorail. Now behind me there is Spaceship Earth. That is my favorite ride in all of Disney World except that pretty much every ride is my favorite ride in all of Disney World. That's what I was just thinking. This actually is one of my favorites, so if they ever get rid of this ride, Disney will basically be dead to me, except not really, but I would probably slip into a deep depression for about a week and cry the entire time. But we're going to my next other favorite ride in Disney World, which is the monorail that is a free ride in Disney World, actually. It goes between the parks, but is it something I have to ride all the time because it is the big memory for me as a kid of Disney World. That's what I associated with Disney World from all the commercials, that sleek monorail riding through the Contemporary Hotel. We're gonna do that, but we just got off my other favorite ride at Disney World, which is Guardians of the Galaxy. It was a fantastic roller coaster, super, super, super great. I paid for a lightning, we got in through the virtual queue, of course, but I paid for a lightning lane for later today. And I'm so glad I did because we really wanna go on it again. In fact, I'm thinking about adding an extra day to Epcot right now, just so we have a chance to ride it two more times. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go ride the monorail and then it's on to Remy's Ratatouille and lunch uh, at the Crapery Defiance. After you pass through Spaceship Earth, to the right, you know, once you get past the construction, <laughs> past the construction, still looks remarkably like Epcot on opening day, right? To the left is where you've had most of your changes, including the first one we're going to come to now. Let me say right off the bat, Guardians of the Galaxy is probably the second, tied for second place with Flight of Passage at Animal Kingdom as the best ride at Disney World currently. It is incredibly technically adept, okay? It's beautiful. It's exciting. It's thrilling. It's like being in the movie. I love Guardians of the Galaxy, okay? Maybe I'm a little biased. Maybe. But I think anyone who rides it is really going to like it. I, w I was really impressed. I was really blown away. I was really impressed. What, though? What does that have to do with Epcot? <laughs> I have no idea. What does Guardians of the Galaxy have to do with Epcot and Future World and all that stuff? Nothing really. Nothing really. I mean, they kind of do this sort of, again, shoehorn thing where I guess when you walk in, you're supposed to be at a a research facility at Epcot. <laughs> Maybe something like that in conjunction with one of the foreign planets in the Guardians of the Galaxy sort of universe, right? That's it. It really has nothing, nothing to do with Epcot at all. Now, it's a fantastic ride, and they had to put it someplace, right? And Epcot really doesn't have with – I mean, you've got Soren. Soren's a really great ride. I really, really love it. But it doesn't really have a high-intensity ride, right? It does now with Guardians, but Test Track isn't really high intensity. I mean, the very last kind of loop around where you loop up to, ooh, 60 miles per hour, I mean, yeah, that's fun. That's a little thrilling, but it's not a high intensity ride. And even Mission to Mars, you know, it's simulated, uh, uh, you know, it's not really high intensity either. It's very cool, very technically adept, 
but it's not really a high intensity ride. And so Guardians was going to provide that, right? And it does provide that. It does provide that draw for Epcot, but it it has nothing. <laughs> to do with Epcot or Future World at all. Now, the case could be made a little bit weaker case that Mission to Mars doesn't either, right? I think it does because it was kind of the future and the future of space travel, and there is a certain realism to it, and you're in an actual centrifuge that they train astronauts in, so you're kind of getting that experience as well. And so it was kind of taking some realism, putting a veneer of science fiction storytelling over it and letting you experience it. So that's why I thought felt like it kind of fit. And definitely Test Track fits. It's been there in some variation for I think since opening day uh, uh, mission to Mars. I don't ride very much. I am. I have a real terror <laughs> of being in confined spaces, being confined in a space. I don't like elevators. Okay. That's, that's a good example. Now, I used to ride it, but then I had a client tell me how once she got stuck in it and they were and like it didn't move. You were just sitting there for like 15 or 20 minutes while they worked something out. She seemed, she seemed to think that 15 minutes was not that big a deal and would make me feel better about it. No, that's a big deal. That makes me want to have a heart attack just thinking about being trapped in that capsule with that, you know, that that control board in my face for 15 minutes. I die. I die. I need a sedative. I need a Valium when I got out of the thing and a drink. I need a Valium taken with whiskey. By the time I got out of that thing, I'd be half dead. I think it's a really cool ride. I do. But um, uh, it's, you know, I'd be half dead. Now, attached to it now is Space 220, which is a restaurant that gives you a simulated experience as well. It gives you the simulated experience of going up on a space, not a space, what do they call that? Like a skyhook type elevator, a skyhook elevator, which is an elevator that goes all the way from the ground into orbit, right? And up there is a space station and you have dinner or lunch, you know, on the space station. Uh, it's a very cool idea. It's a great theme for a restaurant at Epcot in Future World because it's very futuristic, so it does fit, right? Uh, we took it. and Now, I made our reservation. It's very hard to get a reservation there. I don't really like price fix menus, so I don't really like it where you pay one price and you get a you know dessert and an appetizer and an entree, and, and you know because I, I don't I don't usually eat that much. And what am I going to do with it? Even if I wanted to take it back to the hotel in a doggy bag, unless it's the last place I go at night, which in this case it actually was, kind of. You know, we, we watched um, the new show, the whatever the new show was called. <laughs> I need to look that up. The new Illuminations, right? We, we stayed and watched that. But, you know, most of the time when I go to those restaurants like that, yeah, there's no place to take the food. So if you don't eat it, it just goes to waste. And even if I take it back to my room, you know what's going to happen? It's probably going to go to waste. Uh, there's no microwave there, and I don't really want to eat cold whatever it was I brought back from outer space the next day in my room, I guess the next night or something. I don't know. I'm, I, so anyway, I don't like price fix menus. Long story short. Uh, so I, I, I booked my son and I in the bar. Right, because in the bar you can order from an a la carte menu and drinks, and it's easier to get a reservation there, which is not to say that it's easy. It's not, but it's easier. Okay, so I got us a reservation there for the evening, which was great, and we went up. Now, the food was good. The food was fine. There was not a thing wrong with it. It actually was quite good. I did enjoy it. Is it expensive? Well, it's Disney. Do you, do you even need to ask? It's Disney and a restaurant themed after outer space. And the prices are just about that high, too. So, um, no, it is a little expensive. Even, you know, a la carte, you know, don't think you'll save a lot of money a la carte by not having the price fixed meal. Y you really won't. But at least you can order just exactly what you want to eat. Uh, and, you know, they had good drinks there and the presentation was nice the, the host place is a little dark for me a little bit too dark i felt like but the food was good and it was fun going up there in the space elevator was really cool and the environment was cool and when you walk in it's got great view spring uh, stream view screens view screens in fact they were as good if not better than the screens that were on the galactic star cruiser the halcyon so that's saying something they were really, really good. If you want that experience of going into space and seeing that view of outer space like you're going to see it on the Halcyon, just go to Space 220. You know, if you can't afford the Halcyon you can't, or you don't want to spend that much money on the Halcyon, go there. You've got the same view, and you'll have dinner at the same time. And the food is just as good as the Halcyon. It was a good meal. It was a good restaurant. 
Now, here's the bad let's, part. Let's finish. Let's, no, let's we'll do the bad part, then we'll finish on a good note. We'll finish on, the bad part is because I sat in the bar, uh, I couldn't see. <laughs> I could not see. I was facing away from the windows. Why they couldn't turn the tables even at an angle? So you'd have everyone would have a view. I don't know. Of course, if you're sitting at the bar itself. Definitely don't have a view of the windows and outer space, which is the whole point of Space 220. Now, the bar does have a, a giant mirror, right? But the mirror is frosted, not frosted, um, tinted. It's tinted, you know, shaded, dark. So you're not getting a really great view. I mean, you can kind of see, I guess, if something does happen. There were a couple of times like, oh, oh, that looks cool. And then I could turn, you know, kind of crane around, you know, like that to 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 look at it. So that was a big drawback, right? Now, the really cool thing, and this is one of the things where I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I, I, oh, my gosh, I almost missed that type of type of moment. We went, uh, you know, late in the even, later in the evening, like literally the evening, close to sunset, right? It was still daylight when we went up. But while we were there, it takes a little while, keep that in mind. While we were there, the sun set, right? And I didn't even think about the sun setting outside. But when you watch the view, when you can see the view, the, the globe changes the night comes across the planet earth right so you see all the lights start to pop on on the east coast and then as the sun advances across the, the planet across excuse me across the country the lights pop on all across the midwest and stuff too right so that was super super cool I was really surprised. I didn't expect that. I don't know why I thought. I guess I thought it would always be a daylight view down to the planet, right? I knew we were stationary over Florida. That's always your view because you're attached by an elevator, right? So your view is always of kind of Florida and the East Coast, that part of the, and the United States off towards the West. Does not change. I didn't expect, though, that when it gets dark, that changes. And it happens in real time. Okay, so it's literally following in in real time as though you were in outer space. So that was super cool. Now it was super, super cool. All I can say is this though, it's kind of a one and done. It is a good meal, but you're talking about Epcot. They got like 40 good meals at Epcot. They've got excellent restaurants all over Epcot, right? You cannot eat at them all uh, in one visit. Uh, so it is kind of a one and done, and especially for me because I don't like price fix menus, and yet the only way I'd be guaranteed a view is to do the price fix menu. So if I can't go back to the bar and order a la carte with, with a reliable expectation of being able to enjoy the primary thing you're going up there for because I can get good food all over Epcot, there's no reason to go, right? So that's why I kind of call it one and done. I would like to go again. <sighs> And maybe sometime if I just feel like I'm really, really hungry, <laughs> I, I might plan it for the last thing of the evening, maybe, or maybe the first thing of the day, maybe when it first opens, you know, do it very first thing. So I'll be hungrier, you know, maybe make it my first meal of the day. Then maybe I would go back as a price fix menu guest because it was cool. And I did, I did think it was neat. Now, after there, of course, you have Test Track. As I said, that's a, an old favorite. It's still just as much fun as it ever was. It has come back from COVID, so all of the old stations for designing cars and stuff are back open. Great. It's been that way for a couple of months now. And, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's the same old ride. You you get a, a sort of brief breakdown as you're going through the queue or at least an idea of how they design vehicles. You can design your own vehicle if you want and kind of you're putting it through its paces later and it kind of gives you an end sort of rating of how it did on these different variables, right? Um, and then you get into the ride and it goes through the paces, right? It goes through the different paces and you have that thrilling conclusion. So that was good. You cross over to the other side. You've got Figment into Imagination. I didn't go see it. <laughs> if you want to talk about one and done, that was one and done for me. That is not my big favorite. I do not have any nostalgia for Figment. He looks like a cute character. Does look like a cute character. But I don't have any nostalgia for him, you guys. Now, I think it's probably fine for like little kids probably do really like that presentation. It's probably more their speed, maybe. 
I didn't go in this time. I did go to the land. I love living with the land. I do. I love living with the land, that little boat ride through, especially through the greenhouses. And I've done the, the behind the scenes tour for those greenhouses. If it's running when you're there, it is excellent. It is super, super cool. And of course, at the land is Soren. And again, Soren. <sighs> Soren might be a little bit shoehorned into future world, but it is kind of a cultural journey, right? A cultural journey, uh, you know, across these expanses, right? And so I, I do give it a bit of a pass. Plus, it's just an excellent ride, and it has massive capacity, so it doesn't take that long to ride it. Usually, the waits there are not that that long. Um, living with the land, the boat ride never away. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a walk on you guys. And they actually have that on the Genie Plus because there's just not very many rides at Epcot. So they had to put it on Genie Plus. But that's definitely a walk on. And it takes, you know, it's always a five minute wait there. Maybe if it's raining and everybody runs inside, then it's kind of, you know, might have a 10 minute wait. <laughs> The land has some places to eat. It has a food court and it has a rotating restaurant. Now, the last time I was there, it did look like the rotating restaurant was working again. I've not eaten at that restaurant in a long time. And sometimes the rotating part of it is broken because it's supposed to rotate. So you go through kind of the living with the land bro boat ride. You can see parts of it from above as you rotate around, right? It doesn't always work. And I, but the last time I was there, I do think it was working. I do think it was working then. It's an okay restaurant. It's not bad. It's counter service it's on par with a moderate restaurant. It's not counter service. I mean, it's table service. It's on par with sort of a moderate restaurant quality. Uh, it's not bad. And there's characters there. Um, Chip and Dale will be there a lot. Uh, Mickey will be there. Farmer Mickey will be there sometimes. Pluto will be there. So there are characters there. So if you want a reasonable sort of character meal, Price-wise, I would say that place is a good bet. The food court's the same way, though. It's a good place to eat. It's all counter service. Now, here's my thing. You're in Epcot, okay? There's tons of places to eat, and there are tons of counter service options. I don't know. I don't know the Sunshine Seasons food court would be my first place to eat. Now, maybe if I wanted a snack. One time we were there, and I think it was the only thing left open really late at night. And I ate there. Uh, but again, it's like, it's like you know, a value resort. It's like any sort of resort food court quality. It's good. It's fine. There wasn't anything wrong with it. But I, I wouldn't choose it to eat there. I would go over and eat at uh, the counter service places in World Showcase. And I also wouldn't eat. Let me, re, let me say again, I mentioned that they have a new restaurant there in a retail area. Retail area is very bland and boring. It's just got Disney merchandise. Now, that's fine. I don't mind buying Disney merchandise. And there are actually a couple of Disney merchandise items that were pretty, pretty cool. But the, the area itself looks like any corporate store. It looks like any store you could find at any mall, anywhere. Like I said, like any dying mall that has an Old Navy in it, that's what it looks like. Now, the merchandise might be better. <laughs> better than Old Navy. Uh, Old Navy's fine, but you know, Old Navy's like this type of shirt, right? Uh, the, the merchandise was very cool, but the, the environment was some of the most bland, boring environment that you can imagine. The same thing was true of the food area. The food area was okay. It was very open. It was very spacious, but it was very bland and boring. And my son said, I asked him, so what do you think about this place? He said, you know, well, it looks like a McDonald's. It was like a McDonald's. That is not high praise. If you are Disney World and you are Epcot, you're Epcot, you guys. Have some pride. Have some pride in yourselves. You're Epcot and you look like a McDonald's. You look like a McDonald's Epcot. Um, yeah, it did. It looked very bland, very boring, very corporate, and completely uninspired. Which is a long way of saying I wouldn't eat there either. <laughs> I wouldn't eat there either. Uh, I might buy a few things there, but the thing I didn't, I thought about buying something, and here's why I didn't. I bought some stuff at Guardians of the Galaxy, and I said, hey, can you send these back to my resort? And they weren't doing it. Still not doing it. Still not shipping things to your resort. So I did end up going ahead and taking those purchases from Guardians of the Galaxy. But And since we were on the Skyliner, I went ahead and took them back to my resort. It was relatively quick and dropped them off and then came back because we were having lunch at, at World Showcase. But under normal circumstances, let's assume that I'm not on the Skyliner. I'm at, I'm at Port Orleans. There's no way <laughs> I'm going to take that bus ride all the way to Port Orleans to drop that off, take the bus ride all the way back to Epcot. I just wouldn't have bought it. I wouldn't have bought it. 
probably would save myself some money. Probably would have been a good idea not to buy it. But yeah, I would not have bought it. So I didn't buy anything there. You know, they had this really, some, a couple of really cool things. But I was like, you know, I'm not going to drag that with me all over Epcot. And I'm not going to go find a locker someplace and lock it up either. I did think about that. Yes, I did think about that. And I decided against it. Now, back over at the land, when you go past the land, of course, you're going to get over to the Living Seas, and you're going to see Nemo on the Living Seas. I do like that ride. It's a little clamshell type of ride. It's kind of one of those omni-movers, right? Usually not a long wait. Kids really love it. Kids of all ages love it, but little kids, like when my son was six, he loved that. It was so cool to see Nemo, you know, the sort of action of Nemo through that aquarium. Is that a little shoehorned in? It's a little shoehorned in, but, you know, not a lot, not a lot. And it was, it's a joyful shoe, okay? It's a joyful, happy shoe. And I, I still have really fond memories of him at that age in there. And I do still like it. The aquarium itself is still great. It's still a great aquarium. I think it's still the second largest aquarium in the world. Uh, they used to have, I don't know if they have it any longer. Look it up and see if they still do or if they brought it back. They used to have a sort of excursion where you could scuba dive in the aquarium. And I did do that. I did do that, and it was so much fun, and it was so cool because you see people dining, you know, in that restaurant, the Living Seas restaurant or whatever it's called, you could kind of wave to them and stuff. It was awesome. I loved it. One of my best memories of Disney World was that, you know, behind-the-scenes sort of tour thing, right? So if, if that ever comes up again, I don't think it's been offered for a little while. Well, I'm sure since COVID, right? But if it does, check it out. Now, talking about that restaurant, though. <laughs> I haven't eaten at that restaurant, but twice in my life. I went once to, because I thought it'd be cool to eat in a restaurant looking out at an aquarium. That's the coolest part of that place. And I went the second time because I thought it'd be cool for my son to eat in a restaurant at an aquarium looking out at the fish. And that was the coolest part of that place. And I have never gone back again. It's not very good. It's okay. It's okay, but uh, it's like kind of like Red Lobster quality. Well, maybe not even that good. Um, <laughs> that's saying something. Uh, it's okay, but, you know, the view obviously is what they're selling. And I know when I, went with my, when I went with my son, the last time I went, when I went with my son years and years and years ago, I remember we were set kind of far back on top of that. And so it was really hard for him to see. And the only reason why I was there was for him to see the fish while we're having dinner, lunch, while we're having lunch, because, you know, it's Disney World, right? And so even that really didn't pan out on that particular trip. I mean, it's a one and done. If you really want to have like a lunch or dinner while you're looking at the fish and you understand that the price you're paying there is for the view, right? Go ahead and go. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not going to poison you or anything. <laughs> you know, it's edible. It is edible. It was good enough. You know, I mean, you could eat it, but um, you're definitely paying for the view there. And it's it was just one and done for me. Aside from that, you have a whole host of different carts all over the place, all over Future World, selling like I don't know what. Ice cream and Coke and popcorn and donuts and pastries and stuff like that. So you'll come across those in, on both sides of Future World and usually in the middle as well. Of course, in the not right now because in the middle is a huge construction zone, has been for like I don't know how many years. So not right now, but normally you will. And I think... In the past, there's been a bakery there. I, I think it's wrapped up with the McDonald's looking place now. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. I, it's not a standalone any longer. You know, France has a bakery. Go to France. Why am I even telling you there was one there? Most of the food in Future World you can kind of skip. Go on back to World Showcase. Get yourself something to eat. You want a pastry? Go to France. They know how to make pastries. They invented pastry, I think. So head on back to France. Get yourself a decent pastry. <laughs> and speaking of heading on back to Future World, that's what we're going to do now. We headed on back to Future World to see. Actually, we'd done some things there because when we got to Epcot, right, we could get in early, 30 minutes early as a resort guest. That is still going on. So if you're a Disney resort guest, any level, value, moderate, or deluxe, you can get into any park you want on any day you want 30 minutes early. Now, 30 minutes, you're thinking, and you're right, 30 minutes is not very long. <laughs> it's not very long. But I will tell you this. If you get lucky, get in 30 minutes lucky at uh, 30 minutes early at Disney Studios. We were able to ride like Rock and Roller Coaster five times in a row. 
I'm not kidding. Walked on, walked on five times in a row because we were 30 minutes early. Now at Epcot, <laughs> Epcot's kind of a long walk, you guys. We did make it over and we went ahead and rode Frozen um, really early because the line wasn't very long. Uh, Ratatouille, okay, uh, whatever that's called, Ratatouille's Adventure, right? Since that's right by the opening, the International Gateway, which is where the Skyliner drops off, and all of those resorts are back there, that place, when we walked in and we got there, it opened. It already had a 45-minute line. They were all the way down the sidewalk, okay? All the way down the sidewalk, all the way to that bridge, right? Leading it, and that's why I was like, skip it, son. We're not going there. Let's head over there and do that Frozen ride because it also gets super, super busy. Everything in Epcot does because there's not very many rides, right? So we went over to Frozen. We rode Frozen early in the morning. It's a cute ride. I already touched on it. You know it's cute. Do you like Frozen? You do? Then you're going to like the ride. Uh, did you love Maelstrom and you think that Disney's getting out of control with their IPs? You're probably going to have a little bitterness about that ride. But you might still like it. You might still like it because it was still a lot of fun. Uh, most of Epcot's future world is still the same. We kind of came in at Mexico and then kind of worked our way around, right? At Mexico, we did ride the three caballeros, right? Which had been broken, but it, uh, part of it had been broken. It was fixed. Everything went fine on it. I love that ride with the pretend fireworks in the sky and stuff. Um, I think in this day and age, some people may think it's a little culturally, culturally insensitive, maybe. I don't. It's Disney World, you guys. Again, we're not talking about a real museum. <laughs> you know, I think it's fun is what I think. And so I really like that. Uh, Norway. Now, I'll tell you this about Mexico. Mexico is a pretty good counter service restaurant if you like Tex-Mex, right? Now, is it going to be high art? Okay, when I say pretty good for a counter service restaurant, I do not mean that this is a five-star restaurant masquerading as a counter service restaurant, and you're going to get the best Mexican food you ever had in your life for $10 a plate. That is not what I mean. I mean, like, if you like Taco Bell, <laughs> right, it's better than Taco Bell. So if you like Taco Bell or Taco Bueno or Taco Mayo in my area, Taco Mayo. Then you're going to like it. And it's usually pretty quick. The big problem with it is the big problem that there is in everywhere at Disney World that is no place to sit. I mean, they have places to sit. They're always full. Uh, I've never eaten a meal at that counter service place. And I've eaten several there that I sat at a table. And I didn't this time. We just kind of sat out like on the walkway on a little wall or something and ate. That's what my son and I typically do. And it was fine. It was fine. It's good enough. Uh, China, you know, China has a great little mini museum in it. I re highly recommend that you stop by and take a look at it. It doesn't really change very often, but it's really nice. And their gardens out front are really nice. It's a really nice pavilion. Now, it's not super exciting. I don't think people think of it as an exciting place. And the restaurant there is not very good. You, I think there's two there, table service and counter service. I, I don't – I think I ate at the counter service once, and it was – it was if you – Think about the worst, like, Chinese fast food place run by Americans, not even not even people from Asia, but Americans <laughs> that you can think of. It's worse than that. Um, so I don't eat there, but they do have a really nice, cute little museum. They still have a cute kind of movie, you know, Reflections on China, which is nice. I do like that. And uh, if you want some shopping, they've got kind of your typical mall-style import store with Chinese stuff. Ch Chinese stuff. <laughs> And it stuff that when people in America think of China, that's what they think of. That's what's in that store. But you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a fun place to go. Uh, past that, naturally, you're going to have like uh, is it Germany next, and then Italy, or Italy and then Germany. I get those two flip flop. But you know, you've got those two countries. They're both great. Um, I have never eaten at Germany. I don't think of anything in Germany. It has pretty cool little stores, though. It looks neat. I, you know, I haven't done anything there. No, you know what I do there? What I love, my son and I love, they have the little trains, the little train tracks set up. That's very cool at Germany. Uh, and I take pictures of it. And I don't do anything else there. Now, Italy has a great restaurant. Italy has a very, very good pizza place there. Um, and especially for Disney and especially for America. Is it... <sighs> absolutely authentic Italian pizza. I say no. I've been to Italy a dozen times, probably maybe more than that. Um, and it's not 100% authentic, but it is good. It's also expensive. I mean, I'm not kidding. It's really expensive. A friend of ours, a friend of mine, took her parents and her, and her two kids and a kid's girlfriend 
and myself and a friend of mine and my kid um, to dinner there one night. It was all of our first nights at Disney. So we all met there at Epcot to have dinner at the Italy Pavilion. And um, I'm not kidding. It, it was like around $1,000 for how many people is that? Eight people? <laughs> and it was like pizza, you know, I'm not kidding. Like pizza, maybe we had some spaghetti. Someone have some spaghetti at the table. And we had some dessert, you know, we had some dessert. And we had some drinks, but I mean, we didn't get like smashed or like crazy drunk. I mean, we, we each had a drink or two and we had a lot of water. Like Mike, like Mike, obviously, you know, four of the people there couldn't even drink, right? Or th three, and maybe there were nine of us there total. Uh, cause the kids couldn't drink, you know, so they mostly just had water. I don't think they even ordered sodas. So it's expensive. It's a crazy expensive place, but it was good. It was good. And it would, the pizzas are big. It's 50 bucks for a pizza, I think, but the pizzas were really big, right? There's another restaurant there that I think invented Alfredo or something, or the restaurant that is named after in Italy invented Alfredo pasta. I've never eaten there. And I, I don't know. I've, I've read reviews on it and, and they're always kind of mixed, I think, you know, so I think if you go expecting that restaurant in Italy, you're not going to get it. But if you go expecting the Olive Garden, you're probably going to get that. <laughs> That's what I think. Japan is one of my favorite uh, pavilions there at Epcot. Uh, Japan has great shopping. I love the shopping in Japan. They have a lot of unique Japanese items in a Japanese department store. The department store there is a legitimate Japanese department store, famous in Japan. That is maybe their only American outlet is there at Disney World. Service is great. The products are really cool. They have excellent restaurants at Japan. Tokyo Dining, I think, is reopened now. Uh, it wasn't the last time I was there. It's excellent. I love it. Usually when it's open, I do eat there. It has great views out over, you know, kind of the pond there. And the food is really, really good. And the service is really, really good. There's also kind of a counter service place there. That place is good. I've grabbed something there, something small there with my son, and, and it was good. I have not eaten at the Japanese steakhouse, okay? I don't, I, to me, I'm a, I do think it's good, and I've heard good things about it, okay? I've not eaten there. I don't eat at Benihana either. <laughs> And it looks like a Benihana to me. So I didn't eat there. It looks just too, I don't know if they really do that in Japan. Do they really have that in Japan? Like that did, 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 did thing where they cook it all in a giant grill in front of you and it's, you know, kind of theater or whatever. I don't know. It, to me, it always seems like American Japan, Americanized Japan. And I have never gone, but I hear it's good. The American experience is pretty good. They have usually have a, a good show in there, an animatronic show. Uh, it, gets boring after the fifth time you've seen it. I don't go anymore. I don't. Um, it, I mean, I took my son the first time, you know, we went, but not otherwise. <laughs> and, but it is a good show. If you have not seen it, be sure and see it. It is technically adept. The animatron animatronics are excellent. Oftentimes, I don't know if they're doing that again. They used to always have like a group of performers in the, in the lobby that would perform before covid where covid changed everything or at least was the excuse for changing everything uh i don't think they were there the last time well i know they weren't the last time we were there right so either that day they weren't there or maybe they're there intermittently or they're not there at all i don't know they've got a barbecue place there and it's like a counter service barbecue place so it's okay it's okay i wouldn't eat there I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, unless you just are dying for barbecue, I don't see any reason to eat there. We have those sort of barbecue places all over the United States. There's nothing special about it. There's nothing unique about it. It's good enough for barbecue, but why? <laughs> you know, you just left Japan and Italy and China and Mexico, and you're on your way to like Morocco, eat at Morocco. You're on your way to Morocco and France, England even. Why are you going to eat barbecue? I don't know. But it's there if you want to. Morocco is there. Morocco also is a place that has some really good shopping. Uh, now, it does seem a little touristy to me, like shopping type stuff, but it's it's cool shopping. It's got a cool little setup, like a little marketplace, you know, kind of in Marrakesh or something. No, it's really clean, and it's not crowded. So it's not like a real market in Marrakesh, but um, it is, it's a really nice setup. I love Morocco. I have been to Morocco, and it is a really beautiful country, and I feel like they did a really great job with that pavilion. I'm so glad... 
as far as Africa being represented, and it's not represented enough because Africa is a huge continent and there's a lot more than North Africa there. But Morocco does a great job of representing North Africa. I think it's a beautiful pavilion. They've got a nice little museum there. Got some great courtyards, some great photo opportunities. Last time I was there, the main restaurant was not back open yet, which is too bad because the restaurant there, which I think was called Restaurant Marrakesh, uh, was excellent. Had excellent food, excellent decor. I really liked it. They do have kind of a little table service, kind of a tapas type of place uh, out on the water. So, you know, it's called Spice Road Table. It is good. Try try that if the main restaurant's not open. But if the main restaurant is open, I do recommend the main restaurant. That's what I would say. France, we've already touched on. Um, it has a great ride. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, right? It is a lot of fun. I don't like it as much as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, though. I don't think it's as good as that. I don't. But it's a fun ride. I definitely recommend riding it. They have a crepe restaurant there. My son and I did eat at the crepe restaurant that, that trip. Let me tell you, as far as pricing, that's probably one of the better deals on Disney World property. I think it was $35 price fix menu, uh, which I don't normally like price fix menus, but this was a pretty a pretty small one because what you're getting is a salad and then kind of a savory or luncheon dinner type crepe and then a dessert crepe, right? And if you know crepes, crepes aren't super filling. They're not super heavy. You're not getting a giant meal. And for 35 and that included a drink. So for kids, non-alcoholic, but adults could actually choose, a, you know, like a champagne or a sparkling wine. For $35 at Disney to get a three-course meal, which was perfect for lunch. Like I said, it wasn't heavy. It was light. My son and I finished the whole thing with an alcoholic drink. It's about the best deal you're probably going to find there. I do recommend it. It's very hard to get a reservation. It was hard for me to get a reservation. I did not get one at first. I basically went... I counted back the number of days to when people would cancel their trips, right? And they could still get their money back. And I checked then and I counted back the number of days when you'd have to cancel and not like lose a deposit or something. And one of those times I got one, one of those times I did land uh, in a, a, a reservation. And in fact, there were a lot of reservations when I checked. I had a lot of options. So a lot of people did let them go, you know, kind of all at once. There's also a restaurant there called the Chefs de France. I have not eaten there in a long time. When I did eat there, it was okay. Uh, I felt like the service there wasn't very good. Again, I probably, again, just didn't like the view. I was set at a, at a table that was in a weird kind of area. Now, I was by myself. I was a solo traveler that time. So I think I kind of got dumped at the the lonely man's table, <laughs> you know, off by himself somewhere. Don't disturb the people that have friends. Set off by yourself. You know, um, I, I didn't love where I was sitting. The service wasn't that great. The food was okay. Food was okay. I'd heard a lot of great reviews about the place. Uh, maybe I had too high of expectations for it. Food was okay. Uh, if you, you know, you could eat there. You could. At least it's something different. At least it's not American. And it's not, a, I, I didn't really think it was Americanized either. So, you know, try it. The crepe place, even though it's a dine-in place, it also has a counter service kind of extension. So if you can't get a reservation, you might try grabbing a crepe at the counter service place. They were very good. Did a great job with them. Like I touched on, there's a pastry place there, which has excellent pastries. You just can't beat it, right? It's France. They know how to make a pastry. France has a little bit of shopping there as well, which, you know, I, I don't do much shopping in France, but as I recall, they have some decent stuff, maybe something like perfumes and soaps and a stationery store. Kind of weird, you know, kind of, kind of the stuff I don't necessarily think of people buying on vacation, you know, at Disney World, but I think those same stores have been there for a long time, so there you go. Over in England, they've got some shopping too. It's more of the stuff I normally think of when it comes to Disney World shopping. Uh, they have some Winnie the Pooh shirts. I'm going to throw this one up here. Uh, this is... Uh, when I adopted my son, I love Winnie the Pooh. And when I adopted my son, uh, I took a picture of this shirt because this was kind of the quote that always floated in my head around that time. And the first time that I uh, saw a picture of him, uh, I'd already agreed to the adoption. I'd already said yes. And I hadn't even seen a picture of him. And um, I'm going to get choked up. I've got to be careful. I'm going to go teary eyed and choked up. But when I did see a picture of him, that's what popped into my head as soon as I saw you. Um, I knew it was going to be an adventure. Okay, so I had to, <laughs> I had to stop for a second. I am a very, a very, um, 
I love my son very much, so I had to get a little teary-eyed there for a minute. But England has some great shopping. I do really like it. They got, like, tea shopping and some clothes and some little English things. And it's all set up like a little English village, which is lovely, with some English gardens. And England has a great fish and chips counter. Fish and chips is one of my favorite things. When I went to England and I went to Harrods, what do you think I bought? I bought fish and chips at, like, their fish and chips counter at Harrods with the Harrods beer. That's what I had. Um, I love fish and chips. They have a great fish and chips counter this little place to eat outside uh facing the water but jason didn't you say you can never find a seat i did say that and i can never find a seat there either <laughs> but if you get lucky it's a great place to sit i have gotten lucky before and found a seat there but typically no i don't i end up sitting somewhere out on the walkway using a garbage can as a table um but yeah no they've got great fish and chips there it's quick it's a reasonable price we're at Disney World, right? Reasonable price. And um, this time when we were there, I got this uh, pit. We went. We got a dessert, like a Scotland, right? They had like a little Scotland dessert stand uh, for the Food and Wine Festival. And I'll throw some pictures up here. It was really good. It's too late now. The festival's over. Maybe next year. But it was really good. Okay, so now what's supposed to be really good is the steakhouse at Canada, right? I've never been there. I come from Oklahoma, <laughs> okay, and we have every cow in the world here, and we regularly chop them into bits and sell and serve them, so we have really great steak here. We actually really do. If you're ever in Oklahoma and you're in Oklahoma City, there is a wealth of great steakhouses. Uh, Red Prime downtown is a great steakhouse, and um, the premier king of steak houses Cattlemen's in our cow town, Cattlemen's in our stockyard city, west of Oklahoma City, best place you're ever going to get a steak in your entire life. So if you want a good steak, uh, don't don't go to Canada, <laughs> fly to Oklahoma, go to Cattlemen's as Stockyard City, <laughs> have a good steak. That's why I've never eaten there, though. They, they're supposed to have a really great steakhouse, but I almost never eat steak when I'm on vacation. I can get a fantastic steak right here at home. So, But it's supposed to be really good. Canada itself is a pretty pavilion. They don't have a lot there. Like, the strange thing is, is I don't even really remember much in the way of shopping at Canada. They have a Circle Vision film. The thing I really remember from it was, like, the song at the end of it, which was this really sort of 70s dripping with 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 sugar-coated patriotism ca canadian song called oh, oh canada right um which i'm glad i'm glad they like canada canada's a nice country and they're nice people and we're lucky to have them as a neighbor we really are we probably should send them a christmas card every year if we're not already doing that because we're really lucky to have them as a neighbor uh so you know uh canada is there and that's the last one it has a great area to walk around but there's not much there. Check out the Circle Vision film. Check it out once, though. Go see it once. A lot of information on Canada. And it is, again, a great film. I recommend whatever's left of those films. Not much. China. Canada. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. I think that's it. So those are your last two ones to watch anyway. Grab them while you can. Grab them while they're still there because I don't expect them to last long. Okay, and that is Epcot in a nutshell. Uh, with the exception of at nighttime, of course, they have a nighttime spectacular, right? I can't even remember off the top of my head what it was called. I think they've already canceled it. They're going to do something else. They built these giant, massive industrial barges in the middle of the lagoon, right? Totally blocks a view of Future World. It looks like you're looking, not Future World. I keep calling World Showcase Future World. To well, I guess it does block the view of Future World from World Showcase, but totally blocks the view of World Showcase unless you wanted to view World Showcase through a Blade Runner-esque hellscape, right? Now, if you wanted to see it that way, it's perfect. It's perfect. They did a great job. Uh, the The presentation was really cool, though. I did like it. I mean, at night, it's great. I'm not real sure. I did hear that it's being replaced or they're bringing something else back or something, but I liked it. I did think it was a great presentation. Uh, you can see, like always, I always throw pictures and stuff up to the side, so you're going to see some of it, some of the video of it here. And it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. Barely caught it. 
Uh, we got out at dinner at Space 220. By the time we got back to Earth, <laughs> you know, we almost missed it. Um, but it was a really great presentation. And, and naturally, after that, we caught the Skyliner. It took a little bit of time to get on the Skyliner. Everybody was leaving at once, but it moved pretty quick. Pretty quick, it did. And we took the Skyliner back to our resort. Now, the last thing to tackle there would be to say that uh, we did buy Genie Plus, and we did buy a Lightning Lane for Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Genie Plus, of course, is $15. Lightning Lane was $17 there for Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I will say this. For Guardians of the Galaxy, if they'd had a credit card swipe when you exited and you could just swipe it and write it again for $17 a person, I would have written it all day long until I ran out of credit, right? Because it was so good and I loved it so much. My son and I did end up writing it twice because I did buy that lane skip, right? I did buy that pass. And then we it's got a virtual queue, so in the morning... Get on early, right? As soon as the queue opens, da -da 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 -da, so, you know, thumb away, get yourself a virtual, virtual queue space. So we we did get one of those, right? So we did get to ride it twice. That was very cool. Um, uh, the Genie Plus, it was $15 a person. Now, obviously, we rode Frozen right off the bat, so we didn't have to wait that long. We also, Spaceship Earth, there's just really never a wait. So we didn't really need it there. Soren was the same way. Soren rarely had more than a 20 minute wait, again, because it has such high passenger capacity. Now, Test Track and Ratatouille's Adventure. Okay, those two you did need it for. Well, I mean, you could have waited in line. There was typically around an hour wait at each of those like all day right like i said when we walked in it open that line was out <laughs> okay out to that bridge and it was already a 45 minute wait and they just opened to resort guests like three minutes before right so um we did kind of need it for those rides because i didn't want to wait for an hour in line but when you think about it, that means we paid $15 for each of those rides as well. Well, I mean, kind of. We paid $15 total, which would be $7.50 each for each ride. But you're paying an additional $7.50 to ride the ride that you already paid at the gate to get in and ride, right? So would I do that again? Whoo, I don't know. I guess I would It depend on the time of the year and just how busy it is. Yeah, if there's always still a a wait of like an hour, then yeah, I probably would buy it again because I don't want to spend two hours in line. The way I look at it, that was, you know, $15 an hour to, 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 to have extra, right? Because I could use that time to maybe go see, there is a kind of a documentary movie at Living with the Land that's not part of the boat ride. There's never anybody in there, but it is a nice little sort of ecological documentary type movie up there in the theater you know you, you can stop and watch that or you can just sit down and have a pastry and a drink and people watch for a while or you can linger over lunch and not worry that you need to get over to frozen so you can stand in line for an hour right not have to worry about that so i guess i probably would but be mindful of that epcot doesn't have a lot of rides that that really need it i mean I did use it for Soren. I'll say that we saved 20 minutes of Soren. <laughs> we did. And we saved 15 minutes of Spaceship Earth. I, mean, I went ahead and used it at these places. Why not? I paid for it. So we saved 15 minutes there. And we saved, was that it? Where else could I even use the thing? Nowhere. That's it. Yeah. I saved that, that time at each of those rides. <laughs> So that would be the last thing to couple uh, uh, kind of tackle there would be the Genie Plus and lightning lane at epcot and is it worth it Oof, personal decision you guys in my case i absolutely detest hating and uh, hate waiting in line for more than 20 minutes <laughs> i don't even really like 20 minutes but especially i don't know what i would do i mean like i said i only go every two years I mentioned this in other videos i go to disney about every two three years i might not even go back until my son's say 18 this time It'd be like four years from now 
there's too many other places to go, too many other things to do, things to see in the big world, real countries to go see in the great big world. And if I went back in four years, I don't want to spend that time in line. I want to be able to maximize my one visit there every couple of years to, to the best that I can. And if you would please hit like, subscribe, and notify, we'll have more coming up on Disney, Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, and our uh, trip home, stuff like that, all still to come at Disney. Uh, some real things to say about Animal Kingdom. Both good and unfortunately bad about Animal Kingdom and unfortunately bad about Magic Kingdom on our last day at Disney World. But for now, please hit like, subscribe, and notify. And thank you for watching.